Hello and welcome to the Thoughts and Feels podcast, episode number three. And it's going to be one of my favorite episodes, I think. It's because we are filming our Halloween special, our spooky episode um, full of some personal stories that I have had, um, whether it's involving spirits or messages or anything like that. Now, I know it's not a topic that everybody believes in, but... I'm a strong believer in it and I'm sure there's so many other people out there because it's such a topic that people love to either watch in movies, discuss with friends or just research and like dabble in, you know what I mean? Like Ouija boards and stuff like that, which is a whole nother story that we can get into because I have many stories, but we won't do a little, we won't do too much. (laughs) But what we're going to do today is discuss some of my favorite stories that I have myself, but also one that my dad has as well, because it's one of my favorite stories. You wouldn't pick him for the type of guy that would be into the paranormal, but he has this story and I'm going to share it on his behalf. So I guess we'll just get straight into it. Halloween's in just a couple days. So yay. Are we celebrating? Are we dressing up? Do we have any parties? I'm filming somewhere where people would classify as a horror, but at my workplace. (laughs) I'm in a different room. Um, As you can tell, one day we'll find a solid location where we will stay. But I couldn't film with Eugene on the weekend because he didn't go to doggy daycare. And um, I was just home with him and he was like, what are you doing, mum? What are you doing? And he would have just been in and all around our faces. So I hope you can forgive me for this different area. I hope it sounds okay because guess what? My microphone, I left one thing that connects it to my computer. So we're just, we're road dogging it at the moment. I hope you can forgive me. We're road dogging it on Halloween. (laughs) Let's start off with story number one. We'll start off with my dad's story because it's a short and sweet one. And hopefully it's like a good like setter for the vibes. So my dad and his best mate used to live um, in like a townhouse. So it was a double story back in the day. Like, I don't know, like maybe in the 80s or so, something like that. Anyway, so he, him and his mate lived there. And every single night they would look across the road and there would be a light pole, post, whatever, pole, post. And there would always be a guy standing underneath the light post. And it got to the point where my dad was just like, we need to figure out what this guy's deal is because he can't just keep coming here and hanging out, looking directly at our house. You know what I mean? I would be freaked out too. So my dad and his mate were upstairs looking out the window and they said, okay, you stay here. This is my dad talking. You stay here. I'm going to go around the back, jump the back fence, run up towards him and ask him what his deal is. And my dad said to his friend, you need to yell out if he moves. And his mate was just like, yep, you go, you do it. So what did dad do? He ran down the back, jumped the back fence, ran up to the light post and nobody was there. And so my dad turned around and he was a little bit peeved, walked all the way back into the house, went upstairs to his mate and said, why didn't you tell me he left? And his mate said, you were standing right beside him. I remember when I first heard that story, I was just like, you have got to be joking me. So the person was standing there the whole time, obviously his spirit of some form, and while well, dad was there. But when dad got there, it looked like he wasn't there because you couldn't see him close up. That blows my mind. Did you enjoy that one? Because I enjoy telling all my friends that because it's short, sweet, and it's snappy. And who doesn't love a short, sweet, and snappy horror story, ghost story? Um, so there's a few other stories that my dad has, but I'll get into them later down the line. I'm thinking I'll do like another few episodes of these spooky stories because I have quite a few. So strap yourself in. But that was that one. Um, I've always been into, oh my God, I just hit um, something in the office. I'm so sorry for crossing my legs. But I've always been into the horror and paranormal side of things. It's always just been a fascinating topic to me. Um, John Edwards is a psychic medium that I adore and I feel like I've learned so much personally from him because I am very I'm very spiritual very in tune um which is another topic that we can definitely dive into I know it's not everybody's cup of tea but this is my podcast whether you decide to listen to the episode or not is completely up to you pending on the topic so I just thought I'll give a little background as to what I was interested in my mum and my older sister are very spiritual and very into you know receiving messages from past loved ones all that kind of stuff however my twin sister does not believe in spirits whatsoever ghosts none of that isn't that interesting how like we're twins but we are polar opposites absolutely wild maybe one day she'll appear on the podcast i highly doubt it (laughs) but we can definitely try and rope her in with some sort of like gift or figurine or something because she's a huge collector and all that kind of stuff but anyway um watching movies like sixth sense is a movie that i highly recommend that all of you watch if you haven't seen it you are missing out and do not google anything about it just go onto netflix type in sixth sense 
and watch it. Enjoy, and I want to hear what you think about it. So if you have seen it, don't do any spoilers because we're not about spoilers here, but it is just such a touching film. Um, there's something very similar in that movie that happened to me, actually, is when I was in primary school, my mum lost her mum, and obviously mum was dealing with grief and everything like that. And being spiritual, she would, you know, have reach out to her and have chats to her and stuff like that spiritually not making any content uh connection but there was this one night where i dreamt of my nan and a lot of my spiritual encounters do come through dreams like messages and whatnot so um i think it's like what's the word a conduit for spirits and messages is what i definitely feel like i am anyway i'll tell you this little story this is where like i first discovered that i could really have connections with spirits without me reaching out and doing it but people coming through me so anyway in my dream it was like this beautiful spring day we were there was like beautiful green grass and flowers and everything like that and I was with somebody but I can't recall who and that person said to me oh we should go and see this lady she's sitting underneath this beautiful tree so we're walking and there's this massive massive tree and I was like wow that is huge that is stunning and we walked around this, the tree trunk because it was so big. We couldn't actually see like around it. You have to walk around it. And there was this lady sitting there. Lo and behold, it was my nan, my mum's mum. And she turned to me and she said, tell her everything's okay and I'm fine. And I woke up and I was like, something inside of me was like, I have to tell my mum this. So naturally I got out of bed and I went to my mum's bathroom where she was doing her makeup, getting ready for the day. And I said, hey mum, I just had a dream. And she's like, oh yeah, what did you have a dream about? And I was like, well, I dreamt of Nan. And she's like, okay. And I said, she was sitting underneath this beautiful tree and she looked really healthy and she was glowing. And she told me to tell her everything's okay and I'm fine. And instantly my mom started bawling her eyes out. And I didn't really know what was going on because obviously I was younger and I was like, oh my God, did I just make my mom cry? Like, what, what what is going on should I have not told her this like does it mean something anyway when mum pulled herself together a bit because naturally it would have come to a bit of a shock she's like I have been reaching out to mum her her mum and saying are you okay because mum was just constantly worried that is she okay are you all right and obviously nan couldn't get through to mum but used me as a vessel through my dreams to tell her that everything's okay and that she's fine and I was like wow if i can channel like my abilities i guess you could say into being able to transfer messages to people that are trying to get in touch with their loved ones that have passed over what an incredible thing that you can give somebody you know what i mean so it's something that i've been like teaching myself i guess so i read a lot of books john edward edwards again is another psychic medium that i really love the way he describes things and how he gets messages so like the levels of people where they sit in your family and the sounds of things so if you're interested in anything like that i would suggest watching some of his stuff because i find that i've learned a lot of things from him and when i watch his videos and then i go ahead on with life i find that things tend to happen quite a lot more it's really interesting um, so I don't know if it's because I'm fueling my energy and my brain and my third eye's open and I'm learning and everything that where the spirits are like, oh, her gates are open. We can come on through. That's how I kind of imagine it. So they're like, perfect. She's like channeling and yeah, it's really interesting. So, um, yeah, that's just a little background, I guess, of where it all started and my interest. And obviously I'm a huge fan of horror movies, but you know, you got to take horror movies with a grain of salt because you know, what's real, what's not kind of thing. But each to their own, obviously. Um, so yeah, let's start off with another ghost story. This is all it's going to be, this podcast, by the way. So this one was a crazy first experience of energy. So I was sleeping over at my then boyfriend's house, right? And I had a dream again with the dreams. So I had a dream of my dad's dad, my pa. He was in his army uniform because he fought in the war and um, he was standing in the backyard and I was like, oh, that's interesting. And what he did is he led me from the backyard through all the way to my bedroom. But while he was doing that, he was dragging his thumb along the walls and the doors, it was creating like a line. And there was like something black and gray on it, creating that line all the way to the bedroom. He was standing at the bedroom door and he, you know, sort of gestured to be like, look inside your room. And then I woke up and instantly I received 
there's going to be a fire if you don't move the um the little lights that you put up around your bed and i literally did that the night before the dream and those little christmas lights right they are so old they were from the 90s i think from our old christmas tree and i just found them randomly in the garage and i was like i'm gonna put these around my bed so i did just that i put them all around my bed and plugged them in anyway so my pa came to me in my dream and was dragging his thumb from the backyard all the way through to the bedroom pointed at my my bedroom and then i got that message after i after i woke up i instantly got up i got dressed i went back home and I told mum, I think Pa just gave me a message to take down these fairy lights. So I went and I did exactly that. And I was really overwhelmed with emotion. Like it was like I was getting smacked in the face with this energy. But it was all down one side. And it was like an electric field. Like it was like somebody was standing beside me and was just buzzing with electricity. So I knew instantly it was Pa. And he was there making sure things were getting done, right? So I took the fairy lights off and I was just really overwhelmed with emotion because I've never experienced anything like this <laughs> at all, right? So I then was talking to my mom about it and she was like, wow, this is amazing. And, you know, she gave me a hug and she's like, I'm going to go make a cup of tea. You go clean yourself up because my face was just like a disaster. I was sobbing because I've never experienced this before. And come out when you're ready. So I went, washed my face and then I came out at the doorway where mum was making the cup of tea. And I said, sorry, let me go back. When I was washing my face, I said in my head, cause this is how, you, how I speak to people who have passed over. I said, if this is you, Pa, can you please give me a sign that is 100% is you? And then I left the bathroom and then I went and stood at the doorway where my mum was making the cup of tea. And for some reason, my hand just went like this. Oh, for those of you who can't see, my hand just went up to my throat. Sorry, I'm filming this as well for the YouTube channel. So my hand went up to my throat and I didn't do that. I didn't have any control over my hand. It just did it. And mum turned around and we both looked at each other and my hand was still in my throat. We both just looked at each other. And we just went, oh, that was my sign from my pa that it was definitely him because my pa passed away of throat cancer. And the only way that he could speak is when he would push on his throat. And then as soon as we realized that confirmation, that whole electrical field on the side of my body disappeared. And I took that as my sign as like, that was Pa sending me a message, a warning. And what in the dream, by the way, the black stuff that we, was leading from outside into the bedroom was ash. So from a fire, he was leading out the way that I could get out safely if I didn't remove the Christmas lights from my bed. So that was him giving me a massive warning, a massive sign. He was there to watch that I actually went ahead and removed them like his warning had suggested. And he gave me the confirmation sign that it was actually him in spirit form, you know, sending me this message. And I was blown away. That was one of the most intense, first energy impacted experience that I have ever had. Um, and it was just so powerful. I will never, ever ever forget that feeling or that moment in time and neither will my mum like when we both realized about the hand on the throat it blew our minds which brings me to like things that I've uncovered is that my hands sometimes this might sound crazy to anybody who doesn't believe in this sort of stuff but my hands sometimes get taken over when I'm in tune or somebody's trying to make a connection because it has happened before which I'll talk about in another another story um it has happened before where my hand does something that i don't have any control over and it's not a usual oh tasha's doing this with her hands like you know what i mean so you can tell that it's another energy force coming over to sort of show themselves so that was that story and i thought that was pretty fascinating so um like i said dreams are a huge way for me to get messages from people that have passed over and it blows my mind every time it happens it hasn't happened in quite a long time Pro yeah dreams quite a while um which makes me sad but i feel like i can't go getting sad because obviously now is not right now is not the right time with like how my mindset is i mean there's stresses with life with work you know income all that kind of jazz right so my mind is very much elsewhere and blocked i guess you could say so I know that, you know, when life gets a little bit more, you know, financially stable, just because the cost of living is just a joke at the moment, um, financially stable and find a job that actually brings me happiness. And I feel like I'm doing some good with, 
I feel like that's when all my channels will be opened again, where I can actually, you know, tune in again to that spiritual self of my, my abilities, which I am so grateful that I have them and I want to work on them and strengthen them and utilize them where I can, obviously. Um, also, so we'll see. Anyway, I could get carried away. We're talking about all that kind of stuff. But if you are interested in further topics or have any questions or anything like that in regards to the psychic side or the spiritual side or ghosts in general, or if you've got stories yourself, I would love to hear about them. Um, if you want to leave a comment or anything like that, there is a siren going past. And I'm really, really sorry if you can hear it, which I have no doubt that you can. And I really apologize if the sound on this is shocking. Wow, that I really hope whoever that is going to is okay. We'll end this with our last story for today, but I will definitely do some more ghost stories and paranormal experiences if you are interested. But this one was my first proper visual sighting. Actually, let me tell you one little one. The first ever visual sighting that I had of a spirit, I was sitting down in the family house and there's like a table in front of me and there's a TV uh, to the front of me as well. And I was doing my drawing. So I do like lines and dot artwork sort of things just as like a meditation kind of thing. So anyway, uh, the TV was on, but there was nothing particularly on, but you could hear when it was changing from stereo to mono to stereo to mono. If anybody knows what I'm talking about, I really hope you do. <laughs> so it makes sense. And I looked up and you could see on the corner of the TV, it would change from stereo, mono, stereo, mono. And I'm just like, what, what is doing this? So I went and grabbed the remote. Lo and behold, there were no batteries in the remote. So I thought that was quite interesting. So it piqued my interest. So I continued doing my thing, drawing away and stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, on the other side of the table, a little girl appeared. And I looked up and I was like, uh, I just stared. And she was, this is going to sound crazy to people, obviously, again, that don't believe. But she was ice blue in color. She was transparent. And she was wearing a little straw hat. And that's all I can recall. And I just remember us looking at each other and then she disappeared. And I dropped my texter that I was using. I stood up and I just went, mom. And I went off into the kitchen. I'm like, you will not believe what I just saw. And I told her, cut to a few days later, me and my sister are in the back room and we're watching the TV. So like, you know, there was no change in volume or anything like that at the moment. But mom was in the kitchen doing dishes. I just had a really weird head spin. So that's going to be interesting that I'm talking about this kind of stuff and that just happened anyway sorry to digress so mum was in the kitchen doing the dishes and she came out into the into the back room where me and my sister were and she's like yeah and we're just like what and she's like didn't want to use call out mum and we're like no and instantly I thought of the little girl and I feel like she called out mum and mum heard it so that was my first ever sighting but let's cut to the really like intense juicy um first real crazy experience um which will also explain things moving forward in other stories so i started a new job as an employment consultant it was actually my first ever job as an employment consultant and um the girls knew that i liked doing tarot cards which i do so i had done like the girls readings um in the office and then we had a receptionist start so i won't go saying their names or anything like that i highly doubt they're going to listen but we don't talk anymore um and my boss was like, oh, have you done her reading, her tarot cards? I was like, oh, no, I haven't. Like, I mean, we just met. I don't know whether she's going to be interested in it all that sort of stuff because you, you never know with that kind of topic. Anyway, she's like, no, you should go and do it. So I said, okay. And I said, hey, I was just wondering if you wanted to have your cards read. She was like, yeah, sure. So we sat on a table that was like, I sat on one end. There was a little, there was a chair beside me. So somebody else could sit there. Then the corner and she sat at the corner. So, you know, I gave her the cards to have a feel, energy, all that kind of stuff. I did the shuffle. The cards came out. And then all of a sudden, there was somebody sitting next to me. There was a guy. I couldn't see him from the neck up. But from the neck down, he was wearing a yellowed tartan uh, shirt, country blue kind of jeans. And he was just sitting beside me. And I was like, hmm, there is someone here wow this has never happened before so i didn't tell her but i could tell that this person because his energy was so strong he must have passed away in the past six to 12 months which is usually when their spirit is most strong so i continued the reading did the reading and then i got the biggest headache i can't remember what side it was on 
but I think it was my right side. Um, I had such a headache here and it continued all day. And I thought something was seriously wrong that I thought I was going to have to go to the doctors because this isn't okay. This isn't just your regular headache. Anyway, it lasted all night. And the next day I came to work and my boss was like, I was just wondering, do you ever see any spirits that come into the office? And I was like to her, I'm like, that's really weird that you say that because I actually saw someone yesterday when I was doing the receptionist tarot card reading. And she's like, no way. She's like, did you tell her? And I was like, mm, no, because it could have just been nothing or my imagination. At that point, I wasn't really um, feeling too strong within my spiritual psychicness, I guess you could say. So I kind of felt a little bit a little bit dumb but i believed in myself but i felt dumb telling it to another person so she's like you should tell her so i was like okay so i said hey do you mind i went to the receptionist and i was like hey do you mind if i um just run something past you it might sound a little bit crazy she was like yeah sure and i'm like look when we did the reading yesterday i had somebody show up and i was just wondering if you've lost a male in your life in the past six to twelve months anyway instantly she bawled her eyes out and i was like oh my god okay i'm gonna take that as a yes um, and I described what he was wearing um, and that I couldn't see him from the head up. And then I said, I don't want you to tell me how he passed away yet, but I got this instant impact on my head and the headache was like out of this world. Like I couldn't even, I can't even describe to you the pain that I was in and I was getting really concerned. Um, and then I said to him, like, I wonder if you could, you know, show me some insight whether this is somebody that you know, that has passed away and if you could tell me how he passed away anyway so she did tell me and this was one of her best mates who died it was almost the year to the date that we did it um he got king hit and then when he hit his head well he when he fell he hit his head on the side of the pavement in the same spot and he died instantly so that's the pain that i was experiencing was his impact when he died and he was there showing himself because it was the past six to 12 months. Um, so his energy was so strong. And I was like, wow, that is phenomenal. Like I couldn't believe that I was experiencing something like that and that I was able to translate this onto her. Anyway, this energy kind of stuck around for a couple of weeks, maybe two weeks. And he kept on showing me in his dreams, showing up in his dreams, showing up in my dreams. I'm so sorry. And he was showing me his bedroom where his guitar was. There was a cowboy hat. There was a feather, all that kind of stuff. And then the next day, obviously, after that dream, I would tell the receptionist. I'd be like, hey, so this, this and that. And she got his mum to send through a photo of his room. And it was exactly what I had described and what he had shown me in his dream. How mind blowing is that? That was one of the most intense experiences I've ever had visually and feeling wise. Anyway. I'll stop it there <laughs> in case you think I'm crazy, but I hope you enjoyed these ghost stories. I love a good ghost story. So if you have anything paranormal, whatever that you've experienced, I would love to hear it. Whether you want to send it through email, I will include that somewhere down so you can see it or whether you want to just leave it in a comment if it's, if it allows you, um, I would love to hear it because I'm so for it. Um, but I, if you are interested in hearing more stories or hearing more about the spiritual side of things or the psychic side of stuff, please let me know because I'd love to film some more episodes um, regarding this topic. I do have more stories, obviously, but I didn't want to bore you. <laughs> um, but I hope that you've enjoyed this episode and I hope you have a good Halloween. If you are dressing up or going somewhere or anything like that, I'd love to know what you're going to dress up as. I do love Halloween. I have no plans for Halloween, but um, yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> I just wish Australians um, celebrated it more, but maybe I'll just watch a good horror movie or something like that. But anyway, thanks for tuning in on episode three of thoughts and feels podcast something a little different nothing too serious of a topic but um something that i'm very passionate about and i would love to go into more detail about so i'll end it here but have a safe and happy halloween and i will see you all very very shortly in a fortnight yes <laughs> thanks bye